I officially have lost 100 hours due to this mistake I could have avoided in the beginning. It started like so many other simple ideas do. I wanted to create a small app that lets users download a zip file after verifying their email. My mind went to the easiest solution I could think of. I'll just set up my own SMTP server. How hard could that possibly be? All I needed was a transaction email sent to a user that provided their own email. A link inside that says verify and once clicked, I will verify their email in the database and have them download their item. And so like any engineer who loves a good challenge, I thought I can do this. So I went ahead and created my free Gmail account, set up a SMTP server and thought this is gonna be a fun challenge, should be easy and take maybe a weekend. But what I didn't know was this. I was walking straight into a trap, a trap that was full of spam filters and throttling. Now, before we dive in, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Scraper API. If you've ever tried web scraping before, you know it can turn into a headache, dealing with proxies, rotating user agents, and getting blocked just when things are starting to work. Scraper API is a powerful web scraping service that lets you focus on getting the data you need without worrying about the technical headaches. You simply send a request to their single API endpoint with the URL you want to scrape. And they handle everything else behind the scenes, rotating proxies and delivering the data right back to you fast. All right, so after the weekend, I had version one complete. The first version actually worked and that was the dangerous part. It lured me into a false sense of accomplishment. I set up my Google account to allow SMTP connections. I configured the app password that you have to for Gmail. I wrote the Python code to send emails via SMTP lib. I tested with a few friends and myself and all three things look good. The emails were sent, the emails were received and everything looks great. I scaled it up. My app started sending real emails to real users like the next day. And at first silence, no complaints, no bounces, no problems. Everyone was getting their emails. Everything looked good. But soon after that, the crack started the show. It started what I would call like slightly innocent. A user saying, hey man, I never got the confirmation email. No problem, I thought. Maybe it like landed in their spam email. And then I got another message. Hey, your link doesn't work. Fix it. And then I got another. How do I download the files? That got me nervous real fast. I checked the logs. The messages were being sent. The code was working fine. Where the heck was this all breaking that the users weren't getting my email? Was my free Gmail account not sending the messages all the way through? Or or were their email providers declining my emails? So I went ahead and did what every other stubborn developer would do. I doubled down. Every test email I sent would make me like even more confused. I would send an email to myself, refresh the inbox, check my spam folder, and then silently swear under my breath because the email wasn't there. Like I could not figure it out, like what the heck was going on? What I didn't realize at first was how much time I am now starting to spend making sure my original version one of this application was working. It wasn't just the hours I spent configuring DNS, it was the mental overhead. Every time I wanted to work on actual new items, I found myself dragged back into this freaking black hole of email deliverability. I was no longer building, I was just simply battling Gmail spam filters. And it wasn't just technical frustration it was on the impact of users people were getting frustrated and that got me frustrated so after fighting a light bulb clicked I didn't need to be an email infrastructure expert I needed a solution that just worked so I could get back to building the thing that mattered my brand that's when I decided to try a couple different things but what I ultimately ended up with was AWS SES at first, I hesitated. I was worried slightly about the setup complexity, about the cost. Was it really that cheap compared to other options? But at this point, like I wouldn't say I'm like desperate, but I'm like, hey, I'm a software engineer. I'm gonna use AWS because that's what I'm supposed to do. So I went ahead and took the plunge. I set up a verified domain on my SES. I added the DNS records, SPF, DKIM, and everything else I needed. And then I updated my code to point to the SES endpoint. And then I sent my first email. I refreshed the inbox and there it was sitting right in the primary inbox clean as a whistle no spam folders no warnings just delivered exactly how i wanted i tested again and again every time and now SES handles the hard part it deals with spam detection reputation management ip warm-up and compliance i don't even have to think about it i just send emails and they arrive and you know what the funny part was it took me no joke probably three hours max to switch over my entire application that you see right here in all my youtubes the download a lot of the zip files from my 
my own SMTP using Gmail to AWS SES with a verified domain in like probably three hours. It was not that hard of the process. The, the biggest wait time was like when you're using SES, you have to wait for like a production approval. That was by far the longest part. Like it did not take me that long to do all of this. Looking back, I realized I was really just kind of clinging on to a couple things. One, for some reason, I was clinging on to some kind of control. I wanted to be in charge of every part of my stack. Two, pride. I thought building it myself meant I was like a better developer. And then three, fear. I worried about like dependency of a third party service, but I was already using a third party service with Google. I just switched it over to SES. But in the end, what mattered wasn't how I sent the email, right? It was that users got the email. They had a great experience. So then I could just focus on doing what I wanted to do. Sometimes it just changed the code so that someone else handles a problem you don't need to own. That's why all these services work. That's why a lot of software engineering projects just connect services because they don't want to handle all the infrastructure overhead that is involved with building it from scratch. It's funny though, because when you're in the thick of it, it's easy to think you just need to work harder or code longer or, you know, fight through every problem yourself. But again, sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is just step back and ask, is this really where I should spend my energy today? And then the second follow-up question should be, is there a tool that I can handle this better than I can. That one code change to switch from my own personal SMTP using Gmo to AWS SES saved me so much time. It reminded me of why I code in the first place, to build things people love, not to reinvent the wheel. So I wanted to share this small story with you just for you to get inspired in case you're running into a roadblock or a bug that you're like, dang, I wonder if there's another option or I can't figure it out. My problem wasn't really that big of a problem overall and it still got me stuck for a little bit. So take that with you and I will see you in the next video.